Wow, it's been such a long time since I've done a lecture, I've forgotten how to work the mic. I just turned the mute off. <laughs> these are new, I've not used these before. Is it good? Oh, they, uh, you can hear me. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Say again. Good. You can give me thumbs? Super. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm delighted to, and, and indeed, there are so many faces here that it's a welcome back for, or indeed, this is the first time uh, of you being here at the university. You are most welcome, delighted to welcome you to the, the School of Engineering and indeed to the An uh, Anthony Lane Memorial uh, Lecture. I'm not going to, um, I was thinking about this today. I've been on holiday, so you get lots of time to be able to think about this stuff. I'm not going to be too downhearted here. I'm, I'm very lucky, so I should say that um, my name is Carl Dern. I'm Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Head of the School of Engineering. But before all of that, I was the Faculty Advisor for Formula Student, right from when I was appointed as a lecturer back in um, 2009. I think I was appointed to about 2017, something like that. So the best part of, of 10 years. So worked very closely with the team, saw many technical directors. So I think I can talk from a position of relative authority, perhaps not as experienced as others, but was delighted to be able to work very closely with, um, with Ant. Indeed, I have a long association with the Lane family because I was Rich's um, personal tutor as well. And Ant's, um, I don't think I was uh, Ant's um, personal tutor but I definitely supervised his final year project whilst he was here as well. And we'll hear it on many times this evening and many occasions from lots of different people how brilliant he was, what a understated, but what a contributor, what a massive part of the community he was here during his time at the university, following on from his, his brother, but indeed after his graduation as well. And he'd very often be back for technical reviews and contributions to the team thereafter. And you'll hear lots and lots of examples of, of where Ant has made a real difference to the community here um, at the university. So really, I think from my perspective as head of school, and indeed having worked with him so much, I'm really very honored and delighted to be able to, to stand in front of you today to, uh, to MC, I suppose, to make sure that we're roughly on time. Although, as many of you will know, that ain't going to end up well. So I hope you've got the evening uh, free for, 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 the, for today. So what can I say then? This is very much a celebration of his uh, life, his contribution. And you'll hear lots of examples of the, uh, the projects, the work that he's done here at the university, and indeed, from a basis uh, after graduation, from the basis here at the university, what he achieved when he got out into industry as well. But this is rather fun, I think, because you can often tell. So I've been now, how many graduations? A lot. Probably up to about a thousand students graduated now over my career, maybe more. What do you think? How many have you seen? Many, many students. And you can tell the really good engineers, I think, uh, when, when you get them. But actually, it seems that with Ant, is, uh, it was a characteristic that it was inbuilt uh, from him from, from the very early days. And some of the anecdotes, I think I like some of these and recognize many of these myself um, from his parents. You know, uh, and I'll just read just a, a couple of those if I can. So from an early age, and I think there'll be a few in here that, uh, that could agree with this, fascinated with the way things worked, delighted in taking things apart, dismantling them, and then rebuilding them. And indeed, if he had one flaw, even as an adult, he never let a good set of instructions get in the way of breaking a toy, a device, or anything else, like many of us here in the room, no doubt. I was intrigued on this one, though, that um, seems that that, uh, that interest perhaps wasn't just in Ant, but perhaps more widely in the family as well, because when he was 14, Penny, is that right? Um, bid on and won on an old Land Rover Discovery uh, on an eBay auction. It's delightful, I think, and incredible. A complete rust box, but the boys loved it and loved to go green laning 
in it as well. Is Green Laning a thing, or is that just because your surname is Lane? I did wonder. Oh, it is a thing. I see. <laughs> Splendid. That's superb. I wasn't sure, but that's, that's very good indeed. <laughs> Green Laning, as well as joining lots of off-road competitions at weekends, which he won several awards during those. Um, also a carpenter as well, and I can certainly agree with that, because certainly he displayed that... Um, that interesting spark of creativity, I think. So acquired some carpentry tools at the age of 15 from a retired gentleman whose grandpa his grandparents had known. And so, again, this is a wonderful example. Most kids get a, a games console or whatever else for their birthday. But no, with Ant, it was his own garden shed at the back of the garden where he'd spend many hours making things, learning new skills and loved having his own space. I can absolutely agree with that. And if you need any other doubt, if there's any doubt in your mind, if you need any other proof whatsoever, his attention to detail was quite something. So whether that was his 3D printer or indeed, and this is the one that made me smile most of all, simply making coffee. Now we all know there's no simple act in making a good cup of coffee because uh, he was a cafetier kind of guy. 50 grams of beans that had to be ground by hand, 30 turns in one direction, 30 in the other. No, I'm making that bit up. But plus 800 millilitres of water at 91, not 92, and certainly not 90, 91 degrees uh, for, the, uh, for the water. So, and then perhaps the final thing, and again, I think many of us in this room can uh, associate with this. Um, we always knew Ant was very special. He was so thoughtful, clever, modest, and self-deprecating. He hated being the centre of attention and again, I could definitely see this characteristic in him as well, but very, very patient, especially in solving the Lane family's IT problems, where he had to be very, very patient indeed, which we can all appreciate, I think. Now, when uh, Ant was here, um, I had the pleasure of working with him over a number of years. I think he was involved in Formula Student from the day he arrived and um, took over as, as team principal. No, sorry, Charlie, you were team principal, weren't you? And he was the technical director as you were, were principal. A dream team all the way through, no doubt. And the evidence of that, was it your last year as well, Carl, I think, or was it the year after? It was something like that, wasn't it, I think? So to finish off, goodness knows how many years of, of dedication to the project with Carl, we had our very, uh, one of the best results I think we've ever had, certainly in the last two decades. Now, I say that as a throwaway comment, but I think we've only been doing the competition for 25, 26 years anyway. So certainly from 2017 in the last two decades, a superb result. And no doubt with the combination of Charlie, um, the, his leadership, innovation, and indeed his tireless effort, you know, you'd often, and I would often, and others would come to the lab and would be the first one in, in the morning and the last to leave in the evening as well. So a real, a real team player from that perspective. We knew he was destined for great things. Lots of the things I've just talked about will have, will, will have uh, provided the evidence for that. But following his graduation, he realised, I suppose, what would have been a, a dream for him, um, uh, getting a job as a, um, a mechanical design engineer at Mercedes HPP. No doubt because in a small part to the excellent mechanical design lectures he had here at Birmingham. But he played a, an integral role in Mercedes' um, success and earned the admiration and respect of colleagues and drivers alike. And indeed, I think the evidence for that is I was always particularly touched. I know we put his name on our car, but to see his name across the, um, the nose of the, um, the Mercedes uh, Formula One car was really quite, quite something. So there's no doubt that when Ant passed away in October 2022, it was a devastating loss for us here at the university. You know, we don't like to, to, to lose our, uh, our graduates, but particularly one that's been so fundamental to the core, to the character of, the, um, of this, the department and the school. It was a devastating loss for us all. Yet just this week, if you'll have watched the, the BBC website, you'll have seen the great work that, um, that Ant's parents, uh, Penny, Paul, are doing to raise awareness of, um, of this terrible, terrible condition that can afflict anybody, but particularly the, um, the young. And actually, we'll hear a little bit about that um, shortly. But today, let's not dwell on that for, for too long. Today really is about celebrating a wonderful life, a great contribution, somebody who made um, significant um, gains, helped us develop as a school, as a department, 
as a team, I suppose, uh, here. So we can draw inspiration from lots of the, um, the stories that we'll hear in a moment about what is really a remarkable life uh, and the profound impact that Ant had, uh, had on us all here. So I think we'll have the privilege of hearing uh, some of those stories in a little while from Charlie, from colleagues at work, and indeed from staff here at the university, retired and, and current. And then we'll go out to the lab. Um, we have uh, the lab that we'll rename in honor of, of Ant, and then we'll return back to the building after that to continue with some refreshments and drinks. So please do join us uh, afterwards. But at that point, I'm going to sit down for a little while, I think, and I'm going to invite now, if I can, Charlie, if you don't mind, close friend, colleague from Ant's early days in UB Racing, and as I say, ending up as, as, as joint team uh, leaders for the team. He's going to speak on behalf of the group of their closest friend, and will share some anecdotes, memories that highlight his contribution to the team and those around us. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. And thank you to Matt and the UB Racing team and the university for organising today. Um, as you've said, although Ant would be very proud of the fundraising his family and friends have achieved, the raising awareness for Cry and the screening events that we've funded, all those that knew him would know that he would have hated being the centre of attention today, um, especially like this. That said, it is so appreciated to have such an opportunity to share memories, celebrate his successes and legacies and uh, with the people here and those joining digitally um, who cannot be here today. Um, the first time I met Ant was in the old UB Racing Lab um, before it was refurbished. Uh, and if I'm honest, at first I was a little intimidated. Um, I knew I wanted to get onto the team um, and get involved as a fresher, but he just seemed so much more experienced than me from day one. Um, I've got some pictures, so I'm going to keep clicking through them on, in the background. I hope that's all right. Um, he was quickly making little parts and spaces and being taught to weld by Joe Morehouse and Carl Hingley. And there was no way I was up to his standard. And in still, some regards, I'm still not. Um, I just couldn't imagine how this guy knew how to do all these things. Um, I learned later, as Carl said, He'd been given a shed one year for his birthday present as a teenager, and he'd spent a lot of time in there making knives, tools, disassembling and reassembling, and sometimes fixing most things he could get his hands on. I needn't have worried. Um, one of Ant's many great traits was his willingness to teach and help others. Although not a fan of a big crowd, one-to-one -one time with him would prove for many to be invaluable. Whether it was asking for help learning Katia, uh, his opinion on our coursework, teaching those less experienced than him how to avoid cross-threading bolts, use the lathe or the mill, or even how to weld. He was always generous, calm, kind, and when imparting his knowledge. Um, there's a picture from our first year. Uh, I'll skip that one quite quickly. <laughs> Ant was undoubtedly, despite that last picture, amongst one of the hardest working and dedicated team members the, se the team has ever seen. Taking on the role of technical director in his third year, he was very considerate and humble in his approach, acting as the glue that held us together as a team. Ant was always there to support everyone within the team, making sure nobody felt alone in their task. His diligence and attention to detail and the example he set played a key part in the success of UBR20. Um, this ethos was obviously recognized by and helped him secure the role at Mercedes HPP post-university. During our time on the team, each of us strived for Ant's seal of approval on our work. Um, we'd know we'd done a good job if he approved and we'd know we'd done an even better one if he didn't sneakily redo the task later on without us knowing. 
Uh, when it got to the competition, as many of us tried to enjoy the weekend, you could see that Ant was concerned over every detail. Every nut and bolt was checked countless times. He ensured the car was fully prepared for every race event. He even refused to watch the endurance event, um, quietly vanishing to tidy the tools in the, in the pit area, too nervous to see. But of course, he needn't have been so anxious. The car went on to win uh, the endurance event and actually finished second overall at the, at the competition, a testament to the hard work, skill and effort he and the team had made. Um, yeah. The creativity and maker in Ant didn't stop in the lab, with arguably some of his best lessons coming from pranks he would play on us throughout the years. Whether it would be taking over a logged in Facebook account to post on Fab and Fresh that you were selling tickets to an event that had sold out that you definitely didn't have, or taping up all the panels of my old Fiesta for improved aerodynamics and fuel efficiency, and adding racing stripes for extra horsepower. He was a hard-working and dedicated student, but that didn't stop him having fun too. At university, after university, Ant continued to be a kind and caring friend and talented engineer. As we went into lockdowns and the pandemics, he would keep re in regular contact with all of us and even designed and 3D printed masks for clip masks for his use by his friends working in the NHS. A highlight of any meetup would be Ant's show and tell time physical or virtual, in, in which Ant would tell us about his latest project, whether it be a 3D printed gift, not always appropriate for mention in this forum, or, or a wheel balancing kit he designed and constructed himself for his, for his uh, bike. Uh, this was a time that we all thoroughly enjoyed, uh, and I know something that I miss greatly. It was a pleasure and a privilege to know Ant through university and beyond. I know I'm not the only one who can say they benefited enormously from his friendship. Uh, and as a group, we couldn't have wished for a better friend and more inspirational engineering colleague whose memory and legacy will stay with us forever. I like this picture. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. I, uh, the question that I was asking many of you this evening, I haven't shrunk or you haven't got any bigger. I was always a short ass. <laughs> uh, thank you, Charlie. That was superb. And I'd forgotten, actually, that um, at the end of that, that project, actually, with Nathan as well. Where's Nathan? Uh, who, uh, where is, here we are. Yep. Um, was indeed online that we, we did that. But actually, and being the way he had, the mechanism for his DRS uh, system was already designed, already We'd been through stuff and was able to see stuff anyway, so we weren't particularly um, affected. Superb, Charlie, you're doing really well right until you got to the end. Um, <laughs> with that then, uh, I'll move on now to Carl. If you've got, you haven't got any pictures of you. That's a good deal, that's fine. As long as there's no pictures of me and <laughs> Carl, just to say a few words. <laughs> yeah. But Carl, I was in China with you as well, so, you know, I could get you back. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not as eloquent as these guys. Uh, I've been retired a while now and I haven't done anything like this for like six or seven years, really. Um, but I thought I'd do a little bit about the history of the project first. Because um, Ant really loved it. He, he used to sit down with me in the lab and ask me hundreds of times, how, you know, what did you do? How did you start this? Where did you get the money from for that? And this, that, and the other, you know. And, and I think everybody who's done this project now would still like to know what happened in the past and how we came to be why are we here you know what i mean all this all these people have done this project over the years and really it started in a very very casual way with a blake siegler his brother's here at the moment he came to us in the summer and said he Leeds university were building a racing car and could we do the same and i said oh they're just not going to let you do that no way um and i said well don't go and ask anybody let's you know, write a report, and he did. He put a 200-page document together, and we put that in front of the head of the department. It had everything in it. We, we 
worked out the cost of the flights, the accommodation, the food in America, how much the tires were going to be, uh, where we could race the car beforehand. The only thing we didn't do was work out the insurance bill, <laughs> which we, we finally got to America and nobody had done the insurance. There was a guy in the UK, uh, the accountant here, spent three days flat out trying to work in a, a company in Birmingham to try and get this thing insured. And at the end of the day, they paid £7,000 to insure us. And they actually insured the whole event because it was the only way they could do it. <laughs> it was really weird, you know. Um, so, yeah, we thought we were well planned until we actually got there. But I think it, it proved that everybody was interested in it. They wanted to do it. And the, the, the way it really started then was we, we built a chassis and it was pretty much rubbish, really. Uh, none of us had done much tube welding, I certainly hadn't, but we put it together as some tubes we found in the basement, literally bent them, welded it up, and then somebody suggested we get some t-shirts, so they had t-shirts made, they were £12 each, everybody put 12 quid in, and it was quite expensive, and it had a picture on the back and everything, and, and um, yeah, that's how it started, and we invited people from industry to come in to have a look and pretend that we'd built this car already, you know what I mean? And it really was um, a con job in many senses, you know what I mean? Uh, but a guy called Ian Ledbetter uh, was the chief engineer at GKN at the time. He came in and he was well impressed with what we'd done. We took him up to the lecture theatre and we showed him some slides and some, uh, you know, drawings that we'd done and things like that. And he, he, he was very forward thinking, this guy, and we, we loved him because he gave us a cheque for £10,000 a huge amount of money then, in 1997, huge. And of course, the head of the department at the time, um, Professor Ball, had said, well, OK, OK, I'll let you do it, but you've got to fund it yourself. I haven't got any money for this. But if you do get a load of money, I'll try and match it. I don't think he thought we'd get £10,000, because when we waved the cheque at him, he had to find another 10000 because there we were. We'd, yeah, we'd get back to university in September. Blake had worked during the summer. The firm started, and that's when the project started in September. And, you know, we got £20,000 to spend, which still wasn't enough. So we went out and we got about 100 sponsors. That's why you look at 707, it's just full of stickers. It was just company after company was just feeding us money to do this. Um, and I, to be honest, I hadn't got a clue. I, I, really, I really hadn't. It was all new to me, everything. And you know, we were learning along the way as we went. And you've got to remember that we started this in September. And by May the next year, we were racing in Detroit. The time scale was just unbelievable. We couldn't do it now. I don't think there's no way we could do it now. But I do remember uh, somebody said that Ant held the record for not going home for three days. But I'd definitely done three days at one point. So <laughs> I, was, I was with him, no doubt about it. I slept on the floor in the lab so many times, and people wake me up, can you come and weld this? You know what I mean? But. Um, and it got, it got to America, I don't know how, but I was telling somebody earlier on that um, we were that good at sponsorship that somebody uh, had got a contact with an air hostess who was flying Virgin to uh, America and Branson was going to be on the flight. So they put this proposal on his lap and he read it and he gave us discounted flights for America and he didn't pay for more, but you know, that knocked some money off the 20,000 to pay for all these flights. And eventually we flew 22 people to America, and I think the parents paid for some of the flights. But anybody who couldn't afford it, we paid for it. But if you could afford it, if your parents wanted to pay for it, they did, you know what I mean? And who wouldn't fund something like that, you know what I mean? It's like, I tell you now, I pumped a lot of my own money into this in the first few years. Um, I didn't make a lot of money out of it. I started getting a bit of overtime, but it was nothing compared to the hours that I put into it, you know what I mean? Um, but was it fun? Oh, God, yeah. It was fantastic, you know, I loved it. I loved it to bits. Um, and these guys, they were arrogant to be honest. <laughs> they, they were really hard to work with. They're not school kids. You know? and it, was, it, was, it was difficult for me. Um, they, were, they were a bit younger than me, but I was, I don't know, I was still learning my trade a little bit. Um, but when we got it to America, I, I do remember that one of the things you have to do, of course, is a presentation. And we went into this hotel in Detroit and... Um, we didn't know what it was all about. We'd read things, but we didn't know for sure. So we all took suits to America. And, and we all dressed up, you know, nice shoes, suits and everything. And we was in this posh hotel. And then these three engineers from Chrysler walking through the door. They just got a t-shirt and shorts on. And they just stopped because they thought they'd walked into a real business meeting. You know what I mean? Like, it was funny. And they went, oh, I guess you guys have won this one then. And, and you know what? We got the same score as the winning team that first year 
unbelievable for the presentation that Dan Carpenter did, who's, who's taken loads of you guys on at um, what was Force India and you know Aston Martin, and uh, Dan's been brilliant for that. Like you know, it's really good. But um, yeah, I remember that really well. And then we got as far as endurance. The car was a runner. Uh, we took it on the test track and the wheel fell off, which is not unusual for us, is it really? You know, we're, we're good at that. Yeah, we're really good at it. But we fixed it. Uh, we got it running again. And, um, and, and it was lapsed from the end. And they pulled us off because there was a bit of steam coming out of the, the, the engine. They said it was oil on the track. It wasn't. It was a bit of steam coming out of it. And we was all of us, 22 of us, on the floor in tears. I swear we were crying our eyes out, you know, including me, you know, I was just, oh, it was awful. Because we would have finished endurance in our first year, but for two laps. It was a massive thing, uh, even in America. And the Americans loved the car. When we fetched it out of the back of a van and put it on the ground, they would come round it because it was so different to there. We built it round, effectively, a Lotus chassis design, you know what I mean? A, a very English design, you know, this square chassis going through. Uh, and I remember when we put it on the floor, the first thing uh, one of these Americans says, oh, you guys have got bitching headers, you know, which is the exhaust, because we got two, two great big exhausts sticking out the back. We, couldn't, we didn't know what to do with them, so we just stuck them out the back, you know what I mean? <laughs> just making sure they were barely in the rules, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, um, we, we had fun. We, we got it through uh, the whole competition anyway, and uh, we didn't win anything, but we did win, because when we come back to England... We were in so many newspapers. We ended up on television, radio, you name it. And it just raised the profile of former students, not just us, but Leeds University as well, because there were only two universities travelled to America. And, and of course, it didn't just start former students in the UK. It started former students in the whole of Europe. Because the second event, teams from Holland, my friend Alex over there, brought teams over from Delft. And then a German team as well came over, didn't they? Um, the guy who finally ran the German event, um, was on the first German team, you know. And so the event started to get bigger and bigger and bigger every year, and it just got massive, you know. And it, it, it did get hard to control um, from, from our point of view, and so much money pouring into it in the early years, and then it started to dry up a little bit. It was hard to, every year, find the funding for it, you know what I mean? Was, as things peaked and troughed, you know what I mean? It was difficult. Um, but... You know, sometimes we just made absolutely everything. I love all your 3D printers and things like that. I wish we'd have had all that in those days, you know what I mean? We just, you know, we, a lot of the first car was more like built by blacksmiths, really, you know what I mean? It was that, you look at it, you know, look at it, it's too heavy, you know, it's ridiculous. It was 300 kilograms. I hurt my back the first time I picked it up, and it still hurts to this day, you know. <laughs> I swear, yeah. We carried it into the University of um, Oxford Brooks, and we carried it on our shoulders in there and put it on the... And the next year they did it, and they're one of the top teams now. But we introduced nearly every university in the UK to it. They came to the lab, Strathlyde spent the day with us, and Cambridge University, we had a really good link with Cambridge University. And, um, yeah, it was good fun. And 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 loved all the history when I used to sit and talk to him. He'd ask me questions, and, you know, I just ran out of answers for him you know he just wanted to know everything and and the reason he wanted to know everything is because he wanted to make his car better than everybody else's because it was always okay well, what did that car why did it break down why did the wheel fall off you know what i mean and it was just question after question i think it's just exhausted with wanting to do things better and, and properly you know which i did as well but you, you've got to think after 15 years you start to get a bit jaded you can't help it it's, it's a lot of you know, it takes, sucks so much out of it, you know what I mean? It's uh, nearly ruined my marriage a few times, I you know. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, the, the, the fondest memories I have of Ant, I think, um, is the, the former student, the, the, the day that we, we won in June. It's on the morning. I, I used to get up, and the engineering was past me by then. That was so much better than me by then. Um, I just used to try and support the project in any way I could. So I used to cook the bacon in the morning. You know, we had, we had a bacon sponsor on the car. <laughs> it was absolutely brilliant. And it, it, was, yeah, it was you, Ed. It was your uncle or something like that. Yeah, we used to have a, a freezer full of bacon. It was unreal. We went to Germany with us as well, didn't it? We had so much bacon. It was unreal. And the, the, the whole project ran on bacon, to be honest. Yeah. And... Um, but I'd cooked the bacon and then uh, and got the team up early that morning. And what he did was he got stereo out and he got the music going. And it was the final countdown, if I remember. 
and he got it turned up to 11, like, you know what I mean? Flat out. And the whole campsite was going, what's going on? You know, this, it was just horrendous. It's because it's the way the Dutch used to do it in Germany, the Germans used to do it. They used to wake everybody up early. And even, I'm going to do it that way, you know. We'll, we'll get ahead of the game. And, you know, I was thinking, oh, this is crazy, you know. But everybody was up awake early and on the track early, you know. And that day was just, oh, it's just amazing, you know. And... Before, before that, going back a little bit, I, you were talking about him welding in the lab and things like that. I remember the one day, he was welding the, the rear part of the chassis. And I, I come in the lab, it was just me and him in there, and he called me over and, and he says, Carl, can you just come and have a look at all these welds? Are they all right? Are they safe? You know what I mean? I looked at him and I thought, oh, God, it's, it's just embarrassing. I can't weld as good as that. Do you know what I mean? I've been doing it for 35 years, you know what I mean? I said, of course I am, mate. You're absolutely brilliant at it, you know what I mean? There's no doubt about it. But, you know, it's, it's sometimes you want people to give him that confidence and, and, and need it. It was just really, really good, you know? And um, that day when, when the car won endurance was probably the best um, moment, the best day of former student for all the years, you know what I mean? Everything beforehand just went into nothing till that car went past the line and uh, I just hugged him and hugged everybody else. It was just fantastic and Andrew Mathers tried to get me on the microphone. I didn't want to know. It was just, I was just full of emotion. Like, you know, just, I just couldn't do it. But, um, yeah, going back to that first year then, um, you know, it built a foundation, I think, and that's what the big thing with engineering is, is, is looking back and first, second, third and fourth year, that when the fourth years helped the third years, the third years helped the second, that's when I used to love it. You know what I mean? When the first years had come in the lab and somebody would teach them how to do something and the second years then it'd be better the next time, the next year it'd be better, the next year it'd be better still. And that's where we came when, when he did win. We, we were in a run without COVID. We were in a run where every year we'd invited the first years into the lab and that'd been really good with them. So each year it got better and better and better uh, until Charlie's team turned up and actually did it, you know. Um, and carbon fibre came into it more and more, and I hadn't got a clue about that. I never understood it. Do you know what I mean? I still don't. Um, I was a metals man. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah. I miss him every day, like you all do. So, uh, all right. Thanks, Carl. I don't know about not being able to speak, Carl. I'm not sure any of us convinced by that. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned the, um, the campsite because actually that was something to behold with the awning, the caravan, the tents that we got funding from, if you remember, from the head of college when it first came into a college that was a sleeping quarters, a mess, a workshop, all rolled into one. It was really quite magnificent. And then is Emmanuel here. Ah, did you hear all that about the, the, the budget and getting the sponsors? Yeah. That's all right then. That's good. Just checking. Um, <laughs> now, if I could. <laughs> you shouldn't have stood up. Um, Martin, would you like to say a, a few words, if I could? If I could invite you, Martin, to just talk about your time. And you took over, I think, as faculty advisor for, for when I took over as head of civil. Talk about Anthony, his time in lectures. Hello to everyone. And an audible at the back also, Matt? Yes, good. I think I will be shorter than the previous speakers, but my name is Martin Herreros. I'm an academic advisor of UV Racing. I took from CAR. So it was that year, 2000. I came to Birmingham 2010. I spent a few years doing research. I went to a different university and I was doing Formula students for two years. In a different university, so I was at the event that you be racing perform extremely well, but with a different team. <laughs> <laughs> then after that year, I joined Birmingham, 2017. That it was exactly the year that Ant was in placement, if I remember well. And then I took over from CAR in 2018. 
that to 18th was the year that Anne came back, and then he was doing the final year project also with Carl. Well, that's a bit of background about, about myself. So then I met Ant on 2018, and I was teaching him a module that it was called Advanced Fuels and Powertrain System. And then uh, during that, I was during that module, we have some long, long evening sessions in this same building, but in the second floor, in the design center. I think there were three hour sessions. And then we were teaching uh, a mo we were teaching how to use a software for powertrain for engines. Then during the during those sessions, we keep checking what is the progress of the students in in, in a one by one basis. And then I remember very early how one was doing an excellent progress. I can see familiar faces here also that were in the module <laughs> here. So I was. And I think what we had mentioned before about Ant is real true that he was very humble. He didn't want to be the center of attention. But when I was one to one to the students to check the progress, I saw and I realized, oh, look at that. Ant has already made a lot of progress about the coursework. And at that point, I was not sure if really he was needing the sessions or not, or the teaching or not for that, because I thought, oh, he's going to finish the coursework really quickly. Then I remember some conversation with him about oh, how we can modify the engine, which modification can be done here to make the engine more efficient, to be the engine more powerful, or to do the engine cleaner. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about that, to talk about the module, more also about my involvement with, with UV racing. So uh, based, on, based on that, uh, even though I was not involved on and final year project. I have to say that I have learned from that project because recently I have supervised two final year projects that were based on AND project. So AND project was about the design of a DR, DR system, drive reduction system for a former student vehicle. And then it's not like, this is something that we do here at the school that I think is quite, quite nice that we give the opportunity to students to do the final year project within UV racing. I know it's not new for you. I think the person of people here did the same in, in the room. And then uh, what, happened, what happened there, uh, when, he, when, when, we took, when we took Ant's project, we thought it was very interesting. And then last year, uh, one student who was in placement in a Formula One team approached me and she would like to do a final year project following up an project. Then we have a meeting, we have a meeting with the Formula One company, and then we decided there yeah, is a good opportunity to try to have this project about the DRE system for the Formula student vehicle. Then our objective was, to be honest with you, improve what Anne has been done already. It was a nice project, Carl. <laughs> so to be honest, I don't know if we improve. But what we did is we were focusing on the mechanical system that he designed to activate this DRS to be able to reduce drag when you are in a straight line, for example, in, when, in, in run, during running the vehicle. Then at the end, it was a nice project. We used the maker space facility, so we were able to print uh, several prototypes, as well as we were able also to, uh, to, fa to have the final design also of the project. So, I, as I mentioned, I was learning from the project. I quite like the topic. So what I did, I decided to propose a similar project again for this current year. And now the difference is more on the material. We try to have more sustainable materials than for, for that project. And this is still a current project. I don't know what will happen in that coming years, but yes, it's, I think this shows a, a, at least a contribution of the legacy that Anne has given here, not only to the team, not only to UBA Racing, to the school and to the university, because it's a final year project that is for, for the whole school. As well as also, I think that the students with Anne are helping a lot to us as a school, as a university, I will say to attract students also. I think that the great performance that the car had that year was great for other students to come to the university. And I'm talking from a person who was in a different team. 
a person who was a different thing and realized how well Birmingham was doing at that point. So I think this is something that for students from elsewhere is, is quite attractive. As well as also for our students here at the university who are already here, to motivate them to join UB Racing, to join the team. I think during the year we have had increase of students joining the team. And the last time that we asked this question, we were more than 100 or 100 and something students join the team, what is really great. It's a high proportion of the cohort of students that we have in, in the school. So yes, as I mentioned, I, my intention was to just to talk about few experience from an academic point of view, but we thought also that it was a good opportunity today that you will hear not so much from academic, but also from the real team. So I would like to invite Emmanuel to speak also about about and legacy. Right, am I good up here? Perfect, as you've all just found out through Carl rinsing me, um, my name is Emmanuel and I'm team principal for the UBR 27 team. I'm sure that makes many of you feel very, very old, but <laughs> there's not much I can do about that. So, <laughs> I, um, I unfortunately never had the opportunity to meet Anthony. Um, however, it's been great, you know, being able to hear all the funny, odd, wacky stories about you know, you know, all the people who need him directly. And the beautiful thing is, it's not my first time hearing about him. You know, ever since I joined the team, you know, I'm sure the current team can recall hearing some sort of story about something he's done, PG or not PG. And <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it's not just those, but I mean, throughout the lab and throughout the team, his presence is everywhere, you know, through notes in toolboxes, videos on the drive, you know, the messages he's stuck on are about the lab. And yeah, it's been a great legacy that he's upheld. And that leads me to UBR20. There's an expression that I've often heard ever since I joined the team. You'd ask how something's done and it's, everyone would say, oh, that's probably something Ant did. And that was, <laughs> that was it, that's, that's the explanation. And um, you know, Ant with his technical expertise and insane welding skills, <laughs> set the team up to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, he set a benchmark that every team since has tried to, you know, match and beat, but it's still a legacy that shines bright and no one has come close. It's hard to think about someone other than Anthony who's been talked about so, you know, fondly about by staff and alumni and, you know, of all these things I've heard plenty good things, mostly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Emmanuel, uh, I, I think this is a really important point that Carl mentioned, Marty mentioned, and indeed Emmanuel just a moment ago. Why Birmingham is so successful is I think that we do allow anybody to participate in Formula Student. If you want to do it, you can, doesn't matter if you're first year, a fourth year, whatever stage you want to do that, you can. And that being open, being allowing people to, to participate like that means that you get this wonderful knowledge transfer. You get first years interacting with fourth years, with third years, with second years, and it just continues that cycle. I think that's really, really very important to be able to do that. And it's why, in fact, you know, we, we don't have enough time in our degree programs to allow you to develop those practical skills, to understand the link between theory and, and practice. And that's a really, really important aspect of being, uh, being an engineer. And it's why, in fact, that we are so successful when you go out to, when you graduate when you go out into industry because we are incredibly proud of our formula student team of our ubr uh, colleagues alumni i think you do become colleagues by the end of it to be perfectly honest with you and we do watch you you know we are incredibly proud of you and we do watch as your careers uh, develop and see this is why i left dan to the end here look it's a perfect segue you can hear now and dan you're just going to say a few words about ant and his time at um, uh, mercedes um, and you'll see, you know, where you're able to, to apply. So for our current team, you'll understand where you're able to apply some of those skills, some of that stuff that you do at three o'clock in the morning in the lab, where you can do that in, uh, in industry. So Dan, if you could. First 
of all, it's a, it's a privilege to be invited to come and talk to you all this evening. Um, I didn't know Anthony very well, but I did have the, the privilege of you know, the honour of working with him on, on a few projects at, at HPP. Um, <clears throat> and to come here this evening here, you know, learn more about um, yeah, the legacy that he's truly left, um, you know, the mark he's left on the university as well as, as, as at HPP. Um, it's fantastic, uh, fantastic to hear. Um, as well as being one of the team leaders at HPP, um, my story is very similar of the growing up fascination with how things work, taking stuff apart. Um, when I was the team leader at uh, Hertfordshire University, when I did my degree back in <coughs> 2005, <laughs> and um, Formula Students, a fantastic initiative. It started so many careers. There's faces that I see here this evening that I know from HPP. Um, and you know, on some of the pictures we saw on the slides earlier at, at the start, there's people at HPP that I didn't know who were, who were Birmingham um, alumni. Um, and it's similar everywhere you go uh, within motorsport. Um, it really is a family. Um, I've got lifelong friends that I made, made through Formula Student, and um, I employed people who worked for me, uh, worked as part of my team at Formula Student at, at, at jobs after, uh, after, after graduation, and it's... Um, um, yeah, it's a. Uh, I still remember the day when the, the Monday we came into work and we, we were told, you know, eight o'clock in the morning of the of the sad passing of uh, of Anthony. And it's the um, um, yeah, he's still very very fondly remembered at, at HPP and um, yeah, of the legacy that you guys have all mentioned about on the former student side at the university, and it continues to be there at, at HPP as well. So, starting off on the former student side, I think some of you here will know it's bloody difficult just to even get to competition, to have make a running car that functions as a car, that is on four wheels, that drives, and you get it there and get it even to the to scrutineering. That is really, really difficult. Um, to get a car to competition that is well engineered to do well, both in the static events on the design, the business presentation and cost, and then run reliably and score well in the um, acceleration, the skid pad, the sprint, and then to win the endurance and the dynamics overall, that is, you know, that's up there. That's, it's a really, really uh, fantastic achievement. And it's the start of, um, you know, for, and has two world championships against his name from his time at HPP. I think I'm on four or, or four or five. But I'm sure for, for Ant, similar for me, looking back, the time of what we achieved at Formula Student, um, uh, it's, it's still one of the proudest moments of, of my engineering uh, uh, career. And it's those first footsteps that I wouldn't be doing what I am today without the, the experience that Formula Student gave me. And it's why I continue to, much as Ant did by the sounds of things, of give back. Um, and yeah, it's all voluntary the time I do for Formula Student, but, but it gave me the, the start in my career that um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here without without that and I wouldn't have had the, yeah, been fortunate enough to, to meet Ant through, through HPP. So there's a very strong synergy between Formula Student and HPP so uh, we as a business recognise the value in the, um, what the, the, uh, the graduates through Formula Student get as young engineers coming into the business and we're a partner of Formula Student and it's heavily involved in our student recruitment process. And there's a few of the, few of the um, uh, guys here who have worked or are working at HPP at the moment and they'll know that probably of the of most of the F1 teams the, the proportion of our workforce that are young engineers and students it's in some teams it's as much as 50 or 60 percent of the teams going through um, we set a really really high bar for the student to come in to get you know to secure the place to work at HPP it's very difficult I say to the new students to come in, honestly, I wouldn't have passed a student interview when I finished university. It took me 10 years of working in industry somewhere else to be able to get the experience to be, to, um, uh, be fortunate enough to, to get to work, work at HPP. Um, and so, yeah, everything I've heard this evening just reinforces what I you know, did get to see from uh, in Ant from his time working, uh, working at HPP. Um, earlier on this week, I went back and dived through our, through our records. Um, and found a history of the, the things that Ant worked on uh, in his time. Um, so sorry, where I was going with, the, with how integral the students are as part of the team. Um, some engineering businesses, students come there and work for placement or for, or for graduates, and it's a bit like cheap extra resource, and you know, they kind of get a little bit of exposure. At HPP, it's completely 
the other way. They're thrown in at the deep end. They get two weeks of training when you, when you start, and then it's thrown at the deep end, and you find out whether people sink or swim. And the um, uh, ant swam, and he swam hard. Um, so September 19, when he joined um, uh, on the grad scheme, he started off in the, um, in the in integration team. And in 2019, that was back when we were still doing uh, a new power unit uh, every, uh, every phase. So we would have been, when I say phase, you have a number of power units that you're allowed per year, and it was a new power unit pretty much every phase going through. Um, but then over the winter was your big upgrade for the, uh, for the next year. So every year we have what we affectionately call the church roof fund, where we got everyone from the business to come together for the, for the big integration push to get all the final wiring looms, harnesses, detail design and the bits of the engine over the line. And so Ant was heavily involved with that in the, uh, from September uh, 2019 all the way through to uh, December, January, once you start going track testing. And so that was a lot of the work on the Centre V. We did a new inlet system that year um, and a big repackage of the Centre V. Um, and so that obviously went into 2020, which we all know was a bit of a, a stumbling start. But when we did go back racing, that Mercedes car is one of the hands down, the, the, one of the quickest racing cars that's ever been. Um, and um, I think on this next slide, it just goes to show Formula One is, lots of people ask, you know, is there a secret sauce or anything? And there's not, there's no real special, um, uh, anything that different from Formula Student. It is massive hard work, really, really careful attention to detail, diligence in your design. And um, now it's been so competitive for so long and it's thousands and thousands of incremental, ga incremental games care about every millisecond. Um, between HPP in Brixworth, where we do the power unit, and Brackley, where they do the chassis. There's over 2,000 people working on the cars each year. To um, um, It's madness, really, honestly, to go send two cars racing just over 20 times per year with that many people. Um, but then at the end of 2020, they gave us the most difficult game of Where's Wally ever by recognising the contribution of, of um, every single one of those team members because it a, it's a team sport. You see the drivers, you see Toto, you see the, uh, the other people on the pit wall, but every single one of those thousands of people matters and they've all got their essential job that they're doing to, to make the ego racing. And for them to put all of the names on the car and for that to go around racing, so yeah, the, the high res pictures came back from the track and then for the next half an hour, an hour, everyone's going around, have you found yourselves yet? Have you, have, have you, have you found yourselves yet? And to make it a bit easier for you, I'll, uh, <laughs> um, uh, I'll, I'll point it out there. So after his time in the integration team, um, he then moved to the uh, single cylinder team, and that really is the heart of the thermofluid development. So in September 20, sorry, that would have been September 20, 20 that he was moving on the single cylinder team. Um, and within there, so that's doing the, the development for the future combustion. Where, where are you going for your next step? How are you making those extra, extra kilowatts, making it more efficient uh, uh, on, on the fuel burn? Um, we do move people around at HPP. We're very dynamic, you know, wherever the fire is, literally sometimes, unfortunately, um, to, go, to go and help fix that out. And um, uh, you can always see the evidence of the, of the good engineers in the, they're the ones who get moved around to go and help fix items. So looking through the resource tracker for week by week, um, he was loaned out to us Mechanical, which had been looking at NGUK or the ERS module. Um, he spent some time supporting me in PU Concept on looking at some packaging for the, um, for the 2022 car. Um, time with Top End fixing on faults on there and then back to help out in integration as well. But the, um, the strength of the engineer that he was, and it's come out from all the stories I've heard this evening, um, he managed to secure a, a permanent position um, in early 2021. Um, and then we set a high bar for the graduate scheme and it's an even higher bar again for, for, a, for a permanent position. Um, so he was in the bottom end dynamics team, and that really is the heart of the engine. It's only got a few components. You've got the crankshaft, the conrods, the bearings, the piston, um, but they are the most heavily loaded components in the engine. The, um, uh, the piston, the gas pressure acting on top of the piston, um, it's four elephants standing on top of the piston, if you can imagine that, are the forces from the gas pressure going on there. And Ant was responsible for the crankshaft, so the crankshaft has to react to those loads coming from the piston and survive that going around. Um, we are now uh, 
we're on a homologated PU whilst we're developing the new power units for 2026. And so the crankshaft that Ant um, yeah, designed during his time in May, 20, uh, May in 2021 is still racing around now and will do all the way up until 2026 when we, um, uh, when we move over to the, uh, to the future power units. So as I said earlier on, it was a, uh, um, yeah, it shocked all of us on the, on the, on the news on that day. Um, as you've seen from the earlier image of celebrating the team and everyone else, and yeah, it was fantastic to see straight away the guys down in, down in Brackley um, quickly got the sticker ready for putting down the car for the next race at, at Mexico the, um, um, uh, the weekend after. And then at HPP, we have a, um, next to our gym, we have a memorial garden. Uh, got a lovely wall that goes round and um, uh, there's um, golden pistons in the wall for each of our colleagues that we've uh, we've lost on the journey along the way and um, yeah with Anthony remembered fondly um, from, from everyone at HPP uh, within there um, thank you all for, um, for again for the invitation to come down this evening it's a pleasure to talk to you all for those I've not met, met yet or, or spoken to you know look forward to, to talking to and meeting some of the rest of you over the rest of this evening thank you much uh, Dan uh, now if we could move now to our penultimate uh, speaker of the evening I'm going to read this one because I quite like the way this is introduced so next we'll hear from Richard Hood affectionately known as Hoodie everyone's favorite UB racing supporter now for those of you that are here here's something that wasn't in my script though you'll be delighted to hear that Hoodie no longer moans about the surface roughness of the tiles in the sports center but rather has turned his attentions to the new building instead. <laughs> so Richard, if you could come and join us to share your heartfelt reflections of Ant's impact on the racing community, his enthusiasm and fond memories shared together. I thought I could Richard, um, let's just check that. Can you hear me? We're good, right. Okay, so uh, my name's Richard. I'm an academic member of the school. A lot of you will know me. Yeah, certainly personal tutor. Been across Europe with some of you doing those ones. Um, so this is my tribute to Ant and do those and a few personal memories and doing those. So it's really good to hear some of your talking about it because I've got some other pictures. Okay, so those. So start off with this nice one. And I, I think we go through generation, you know, every, every year is slightly different, but I still think of this as one of the golden generation. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe because I happen to be year tutor for this year. Don't you remember the introduction? Yeah. Um, if anybody done anything nice over the summer, had you done, yeah, you were all quiet doing those ones. So I don't know if you remember that talk. Uh, won't go too far on those. Trying to make it interesting. I also taught Ant for advanced vehicle engineering and also machining support systems. So the precursor for RAMP. So again, part of Ant's legacy is hopefully giving back to some of the students and doing those. And I do remember, I remember this picture being taken, graduation day doing those. Um, I was in the earlier one, but I slipped out to take this one. I thought I'd put this one in first, just to show the level there, Carl, sorry, and, and your, your shortness in terms of those. And I still remember you having a go at us. Huh? I know, I know, I know. I still remember you having a go, and then you stood up there and doing those. And uh, yeah, they're fantastic. And I will say as well, uh, I also do a lot of the practical aspects in doing those. Uh, and my memory is Van, extremely practical person doing those, very reserved. His attention to detail, superb doing those. Always willing to lend a hand, give those. And I really did enjoy the, the talks, the meetings, the chats, going through those ones. So this is me, and hopefully some of you will remember some of these photos, some of these pictures. Also, you know, nice manual for mentioning some of the history and doing those. Um, I've had the luxury of being to several competitions over the years, going to Czech Republic, and I happened to take... Oh, oh, have we gone off? Huh? Oh, oh no, no, what's happened? It switched off! 
The projector's gone off. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, boo. All right, here we go, here we go. Right, I've got to work this now. Right, there we go. Oh, we might be delayed for a few seconds. Oh, look, someone's trying to tell me something. Yeah, they don't want these pictures seen online. Yeah, okay. So we'll just give, we'll just give it a few seconds in terms of those. Oh, oh, is it coming on? Is it coming on? Here we go. Let's see if I can work the projector. Should be coming on. Oh, oh, oh have we got the on-off switch? Oh, no, no, boo. Oh, it would happen. Oh, oh, is it coming on? Huh? Is it hers? Is it coming? Coming? Oh, the lights are this. The lights are on. Here we go. Here we go. We're coming up. We're coming up. We're coming up. We're coming up. <sighs> Where's Tamu? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Oh, 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 oh. We're warming up. Oh, 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 no. Oh, oh, we go. Oh, oh, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Oh, I think we're coming on there. Have to do the classic one. Okay, run, the, run around. Right, right, lights down. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Right, up, up. Oh, oh, no, a bit dark there. Sorry. You can tell my lectures are quite entertaining. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully we can see those. Yeah. Yeah, here we go, here we go, we're back now, we're back now. I think we're back, everybody see that? Okay, right, so these are a few from me, so let's start off. Okay, so first met Anne, so these are some of the pictures, hopefully you remember, recognise some of them. First met Anne, I think that's Silverstone, first time round, uh, 707, I think I turned up Saturday afternoon doing those ones. Yeah, a beautiful car, superb in terms of those, but I think we had a few issues to begin with. But as I always say, it's all about the learning experience going through those. The number of things that were changed for that car, uh, aero package, carbon fiber, yeah. And it was all about the learning experience. And I think Carl mentioned about how he improved every year and did those. Um, so we went. And you can see Ant in the picture there with the rest of the team, some members here today going through doing those uh, and also doing that. So we went through, we did those. Then you can see the happy picture there. Although I will say Glenn Cross, the driver, yeah, and also Ant. So they went away, fixed things, improved, did those. Everybody else really happy, smiley. Hopefully you recognize some of yourselves on these. Yeah, certainly Charlie there, yeah, in the middle. Yeah, um, yeah, and the group there. And I will say these are, yeah, the golden generation. Yeah, going through those uh, and working those. So might recognize some of those. There's Nathan, I think you're, yeah, at the, at the back there. Some of you looking a lot younger. Yep, yep, yep. Sorry, I get my own back, embarrass you on these ones. There's so, a lot of in there, huh? Huh? There's a lot of copper in there, it's not all gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, good luck, good luck, good luck. Right, next one. Moving on. You remember this? Most, Czech Republic. Yeah, I remember not being well on the drive. Don't you remember that, Carl? Yeah, yeah, driving when a. Yeah, we did some fun things for health and safety okay, and did that. Yeah, we had to change the insurance because we didn't do that. And then I can't remember, Sam was in the car. Who else was in the, the van, I think? But I do remember being in a van with you for 14 hours driving across Europe. They were fun times of nothingness. Yeah. <laughs> and we arrived at this, this is the Czech Republic racetrack, middle of nowhere. It was quite literally the middle of nowhere. It's 50 miles from Prague and we yeah. never got there, did we? No, we never got there. Went, yeah, 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 they all went. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah, we drove there and then we drove back. Yeah. But this beautiful little racetrack, uh, middle of the mountains, we arrived and we were always forward planning, experience in terms of those. We didn't go directly on the bank, don't know if you remember this. We went a bit away from it, which if any of you remember, that, I think it was the Thursday night. Remember the Thursday night? Do you remember the rainstorm? Do you remember at one stage I was saying, yeah, we perhaps should go and s sit in the cars because it was that bad? Yeah, it was bad. Um, this was a motorcycle racetrack. This Going round, and we used to sit there on the bank, Carl and I. Yeah, we didn't get to Prague, but we did get to watch this. Looking around there, watching the motorbikes and do those. And this was my first international, first away experience of doing those. And then, yeah, some things never changed though. Left hand side, yeah, Anthony in there, we were working in the truck for the first couple of days because the pits weren't open, doing those bits. So I had the luxury of not being involved in the team, not doing anything, just watching and having fun. Yeah, so the best bit, in fact, and doing those. And on the right-hand side, I should do a caption competition for this. I have no idea what Ant's doing, Sam, 
the rest of the team get going through there, doing those, looking at that, building in the pits. And yeah, we did well in terms of those, the fourth height, building on that car in terms of those. A few more. This was just before, I haven't got any footage of the video of the car going around the track. It did go around the track though. But Ant getting ready there, helping out. And that's what I remember, Ant. Always willing to help out, always willing to lend a hand, doing these, going through and do those. I do remember the rain though. Yeah, it really, yeah, it was bad. And I do remember, I think it was, was it Bath? Their tent blew down? Yeah, yeah, so, so you might see the theme there, but I remember Bath's tent and doing those. But there was the fun bits, and the bits I remember were having fun around, so I'm looking there, Aaron, on the top of Aaron pulling the, the signs down, so you remember these? Yeah, some of these are coming back, sorry, I'm getting the smiles on the face of this one. Uh, the key thing that I do remember was, Carl mentioned about the campsite, uh, it was a small team going away, and you can't see because of the black there, so perhaps if I turn the lights down. Ant stood in the, in the back there at the top, and then also at the front next to Carl there. I do remember the team meetings. I do remember the fun sat around there. Smell, though, what them tents smell. They were bad. They were bad. They were bad. They were, yeah, they were bacon and sweat. But, but they were the fun times, you know, the real camaraderie, the teamwork, the going through those. And they sat down for a team meeting, so a team debriefing after the end of the evening. And I still remember you saying, I think that was the first time that they'd really done that or gone through those. And I remember you saying to me, it was really good, just sat there watching them go through that and then working on. And that was, when we mentioned about the endurance winning team, that was the, um, the, the baseline, the learning those, the going through that. And that was fantastic in terms of those. So then we went back and the team came back. And then I'm just going to blank this one a little bit, hopefully, because you might see this one. So I also had the luxury of, I do do some work as well from, from my land manager and boss there. But this is Coniston in the Lake District. So this is uh, an outward bound center. It's actually university campus. So I was actually on university campus when I was there. And I had the fortune of going with the students and seeing those. And this was wave number one of that year. So I looked back through these. I don't know if you spot Ant in there. Yep. He's, where are we, where are we, where are we? There we are, there we are, up there. Yeah, and some of those. And this is to help with teamwork, with leadership. We did, we did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I still remember the year before, and yeah, I don't know if perhaps some of those should remain as pictures and doing those on the mobile phone for those. But, um, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. But they were, they were fun, though, yeah, we were good. Yeah, we'll get to some more of those in a minute as well. Okay, but doing those. And the team worked. Little did I know that at the time, some of the early stages of the next generation of Formula Student Car would be being built. Uh, some of the next plans, so let me see. And they were working on them whilst they were up there, so team working. And we actually had these ones. <laughs> yeah. And Ant stood on the left there. Yeah, so this is the next generation Formula Student car. Yeah, um, do these. So what they had to do, students had to do was, they had to build a, in true mechanical style, we like to do this, and the team working course. So student group doing those. And they would take the various equipment they're given, and they were told to drive it down from the top of the hill, all the way down to the bottom, through a chicane course doing those. Get to the bottom, I think we had a few minutes. Yeah to change over to amphibious, do a lap around the lake, and then come back. Now, the good news is, unfortunately, I don't have any footage of it on the lake, which means that it must have floated really well, because the only ones that I had footage of was the ones that sank. <laughs> OK, yeah. But yeah, so I'm doing those. So that was the first stage of that. And I will say as well, the team leader at the time, I think, was very happy with the design. Yeah. I don't know if you, read, you won't have had a clue I was there taking that picture, Charlie. Sorry, I just couldn't resist. So again, more teamwork. He looks really happy at that. Yeah, he's got the, the blindfold on him at the moment, at the time. But um, yeah, really happy. So then they went back. And it, I think the next slide, I think, was really nice. You mentioning something about Anthony's welding skills. Yeah, welding skills and doing those. I still remember walking by, doing those in the lab, workshop, doing the work in terms of those. Yeah, health and safety, perhaps there, but yeah, pretty good in terms of those. And I don't know about the welds and doing those, so I do remember doing that. And then I show this one. So you've seen the one that I think Harry or, or the people at the front were taking. This was at the back, so I managed to stand at the back. I don't know. Am I okay to keep the lights off? 
Are we okay still there? So this was, you can see Ant on the shoulders repaying Aaron, because Aaron stood on the top there doing those. And I happened to be stood at the back. And there are some memories in your life that really stand out. And that weekend was probably one of the happiest memories of my life in terms of those. Um, in terms of the teamwork, the effort, the whole team in terms of those. So I've got a few of that just to show a few bits. And also a couple of videos of the time as well. Uh, so this was, I think, Saturday, getting ready for sprint, doing those. And I put that one on because at the time we'd just gone through the merger, I think, uh, merger of schools. And Professor Sterling was the new head of school. And the new head of school decided to come out and see Formula Student. And this car going round, doing these, I think they'd done one lap. And I think he was on the second lap round. And the head of school sat in the, in the stands. And I was about two rows behind him, and he asked me, how are you doing? How's, how are we doing? How's the team doing? You know? And just on the tannoy, we'd just done the lap, and it said, UBR set the fastest lap by four seconds. <laughs> so that was one of the best things, you know, nice way to start off the weekend. New head of school, really good. Yeah, we're doing really well. All that effort, all that money, all those resources, really good in, in terms of those. And then, yeah, kept on, kept on getting. Uh, although, Carl, you mentioned about nervous doing those. This is taken from the stands just before. Yeah, you'd seen it all before. Yeah, you were expecting this and do those. And I still remember you saying words to me, I think Saturday afternoon about that, you know, we might win this. We might do really well and, and doing those. But yeah, confidence in those. So that in the stands. Huh? Yeah. And I will say that was probably, I get nervous at endurance. Okay, not so much students, but I get nervous, want it to do well. That was probably the, one of the most relaxed. I remember the Saturday evening, the car packed away doing those, going and working on it, doing those. And I remember the team effort and doing that, you know, everything, the attention to detail that they'd all done beforehand. And again, for the new students coming through, attention to detail, doing those, the effort. And it was just such a peaceful place, such a nice place to be able to do in those. And then a few on the track. Okay, I'm sorry for the bad photography. Uh, taken from a distance doing those. You can see the first bit. We've done the first lap going round. And then in the middle there, the one on the bottom left there, that's uh, at the changeover. So for those who don't know, you have to do 11 laps, have a changeover, stop the car, and then start the car again, and then do another 11. The changeover is probably one of the most nerve-wracking bits, I would say, if it doesn't start again doing those. Uh, and then we continued on, did those, and then crossed the line. Yeah, smooth as can be. Yeah, I don't think we had any issues. Lovely to be able to see. Although, I will say, sorry for saying this, but um, it looks really nice, easy there. But we didn't have it all our own way, did we? There was a few cars. I think some oil was dropped on the track beforehand. Sorry, I shouldn't put this one in. I don't know if anyone remembers this. Yeah, yeah, uh, those ones uh, and doing those. Um, so, yeah, got a few others. And then moving on. Uh, you remember the time afterwards? Probably don't. You were all really happy I was there snapping photos doing those. Um, so the gentleman there, William, he's the person that signed the back of the car. So I've got the video footage there just before he signed it and going round and the chaos and the fun and the excitement. And yeah, you can see Ant in the center there. And then I've got a couple of videos from this as well. Um, so hopefully these work. Let me maximize this. So this is, sorry for the grainy footage, taken on an old iPhone. Yeah, and you can see the group around and at the back there. He's talking through about the wing design. So he's picking up on his FYP beforehand and doing those. So starting doing, yeah, doing plans in terms of those. Okay, so that's the first one. And then a bit of fun afterwards on the side. Yeah, Carl in the car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Carl in the car, um, and this is the group, Charlie, Nathan, sorry, the beer's coming out, sorry, this is where it goes a bit downhill, so I'm very sorry on this. Yeah, I think Carl looking at the, the width of the car, yeah, saying it's good, yeah, nice. I do think that he did say, there was a comment about how, yeah, we got to the end of life, and engineers talk about design life, it got to the end and do those, but yeah, having fun on the, yeah, yeah, picking the bits off the tyre, classic ones, and doing those, and with the group milling around, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Glenn Cross kicking the tight, yeah, not sure, yeah. And then Ant in the corner, so yeah, a bit of fun, relaxation, the hard work done, uh, doing those. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Carl, I'm embarrassing you a bit there now. But yeah, the team in terms of those. Yeah, and then we, yeah, and then we went on to, I don't know if I go, I think, yeah, you get out in a circuit. It's a, hmm, hmm, huh? Hmm. 
Yeah, it was a good car. Yeah. Yeah. And let me let me move on to the next one. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Oh, 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 oh. And then that one just before the signing. I'm doing that, the group photo in those. And then moving on, another one. These are some of the action shots afterwards. So I've got Ant in the car. These are when they're taking the formal pictures. I'm doing those, chilling out, relaxing, going over the, the various bits there. And then I think this one, yeah. So they've got Ant in the, in the back there. Um, this was talking through uh, somebody come over to look at the car. Not sure if any of you recognize the gentleman sat there, stood there. Yeah. Uh, looking over the car, yeah, getting some of discussions and doing those. So some of the behind the scenes footage of doing those. Uh, yeah, fun times, able to take those and the excitement and the happiness. I will say another couple sat around chilling. And I will say one thing. That was the fastest I've ever seen the pit lane and the pit emptied. Yeah. Yeah, if only they all could be like that. We were sat down around waiting for that. I think that was because the awards ceremony was on, and you're also desperate to go to it. So, no, from academic point of view, great to be able to do those. Uh, yeah, gets the pit cleared really quickly. So, Mark, yeah, that's what we need to do next year. Yeah, win the whole thing, and then we'll get the pit cleared really quickly. Yeah, okay, and Reese and various people. And then one of my most resounding memories from this competition was the friendship that you showed to the other teams. I don't know if you remember this, this is Cardiff at the end, overall winners, and the friendliness and doing those, and I think that epitomizes the friendliness of the former student competition. Yes, you're competing against each other, but you're all friends, you're all family, and everybody knows the hard work, the dedication that you've been through for those. Yeah, so it happened to be that. And then also, yeah, don't know if you remember that one, yeah, it was Carl's last year. So it actually made me one of the happiest because Carl got to do those. And that's myself, Carl, Lee, um, Alex, Mark. Do you remember sat on the bench there at the end, chilling? Yeah, the team was done. And I will say it was lovely to be able to walk through the pit lane. Yep, knowing really well, doing those really good. Another note for the current team. Yeah, that's what you need to aim for and aspire to that team's uh, brilliance and turns out. Right. And then I think Ant went to work for Extract. So he went, yeah, year out, went to work for Extract. Um, so I've taken a few bits there. And the reason I do that is I taught Ant for various modules and do those. So some of these bits are some of Ant's work, which I think is nice to give back and see those. I will say from my point of view, yeah, I did the engines, and I used to enjoy chatting with them about them. But also, manufacturing support, yeah, you only work for one week, apparently, those, but did do gun drilling. So I don't know, gun drilling for part for ramp this year? Yeah, good one. Yeah, provided support shop floor and do those. And one of the things that I do is I teach research and application machining process, precursor machining support systems that some of you do. And every year I get the students to do a newspaper article. Don't you remember this? I still, yours was tool fast, tool furious, wasn't it? I still remember those ones. Yeah, not that I, yeah, I remember the, this. And I remember Ant's one in terms of those. So let's have a look. So this is a newspaper article. And you might notice, sorry, it goes downhill from here, so I'm very sorry. Yeah, despicably good machine with UOB molding. I like minions. Yeah, uh, they are always, the students try and pick fun about and do those. Um, yeah, and I try to get them not to tell me the type, not to be surprised. Marking scheme, quite easy. My colleague, Dr. Sue, sits next to me, and we go through the titles and do those. And if he smiles and laughs, yep, yeah, it's good. Yeah, if it's indifferent, indifferent. If it's like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, Ants was a good one, so yeah, yeah, this is a good one. So I don't give them out, but do those. And I do at some stage hope to have a wall of fame down to the workshop because part of the legacy of this year and the practical side is also improving the facilities and doing those and spending Carl's money. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, and do those. Uh, feedback, give feedback, do those, send some nice bits. Surface roughness, you'd think, yeah, do you want help on those? Uh, tool paths, doing those. And when the students submit, we get you to do the student assessment and feedback template. You all remember that? You all remember that? Yeah, the assessment and feedback template. You're all smiling now, so yeah. Yeah, and we do look at them. We don't, we do, don't we, sir? We look at them. Absolutely, Absolutely yes. <laughs> and I looked at Ant's one, and I see what he wanted feedback on there. And the classic one, if only they were this easy. Yeah, the shade of yellow used in the poi in part two. <laughs> And I think that sums up Ant, Joker doing those bits. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Layout, structure those. But nope, the shade of yellow in terms of those. Yeah, so brilliant in terms of those bits. 
Then the next one. Don't remember this one? Yeah, yeah, bit APE. I don't know who was in this. You were in it. Nathan, I think were you in this group? I can't remember. I picked this one out. Uh, I took up the teaching of this module AVE. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not a vehicle engineer by background. I'm a machinist, like making things, designing stuff, like cars, do those. Um, supervise some of you those. This was their disaster response vehicle. I think you, you did the work, or you, I saw you the day before and you hadn't finished the report. And then you submitted the report. Yeah. I still hold this report that all the students did as one of the best ones I've ever read. Uh, I think given that a lot of you have done year out, I think two or three of you have done Formula One teams, X-Track, Rolls-Royce doing those, I realized that part of my job is to actually push into the real, do those. And I do this with PhD students. There's a point when they actually know more than me and they're actually teaching me to do this. This group actually taught me how to design a car and do these bits and gone through. So the high quality there. And I still use this. Gold, I said gold standard, sorry, Carl. Yeah, I still use this as one of the designs and do that. So if you picked on those. Moving on. Right. Okay. Yeah, this is some of the bits. So it's really nice hearing some of the comments that you've said beforehand. And this one was, again, round the tent doing those. And this was the team giving back. And I think giving back there. Yeah. Okay. And it was, yeah, you probably can guess what's coming next. Yeah. Still got the footage of those. Yeah. Uh, the first tier team, yeah, giving back, doing those. And then the seniors at the top, the experienced ones, doing those, yeah. And, yeah. and then myself, Carl, various team on there, health and safety. You perhaps noticed Ant on the left, yeah. And he'd actually come up with a new novel idea, yeah. Perhaps hadn't noticed in there. And it was nice hearing your story, yes. Yeah, it was nice hearing the story in terms of those. We've actually done, it was so good that we were able to do, yeah, don't know if you remember that. Yeah, the UBI. I think that was, you told me about this. It was a spare laser cut corner. Yeah, and those ones. Sorry, yeah. And it was UBR branded toast for breakfast. Yeah, it was really good in terms of those. And I don't know, you mentioned about, I think, I don't know, do you want to see it or are you okay to see it? Yeah, this is some of the, uh, the memories from the history. So this is Ant doing those. And we were going through, yeah, uh, yeah, some of the fun times in the campsite and doing those. Yeah, going through, yeah, doing the, uh, the toast, getting ready for breakfast. Yeah, an important part of the day, make sure everybody's done those. And yeah, actually did have it, it was quite good. Yeah, and then, yeah, we did that, and then, yeah, so some of the fun in those. Yeah, okay, yeah, the cheese. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I did say we got a bit of that, okay, right. And then a few bits from me, so in my house, I don't know if you remember this. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if you remember this, so this was the group there, and this is some of the fondest memories that I have. Um, so the one on the right was from the Czech Republic and the one on the left was from Germany. Yeah. yeah. You uh, that I did. So funny story that, uh, <laughs> so this is an energy drink because we're in the Czech Republic. And for those who don't know, Czech Republic has a famous export. And the students, we were going to the local supermarket doing the shopping, buying the food and doing those. And the students gave me one of the nicest presents I've ever had, which was two cans of Zemtex. And I happened to put them in the van on the front seat. And I drove all the way back, all the way from the Czech Republic, all the way across Europe, got to the port. And I think we had an argument with the cust customs official about trying to get on the ferry earlier because I wanted to get home and did that. And I think you and I were parked in the middle there. And I think I said to you, I think I should put the Semtex in the back. <laughs> so I nearly got arrested at that point re-entering. Uh, yeah, and I, I still keep those to the day, so I remember the, the group in terms of those and do those. And then one final one, I don't know if any of you remember these, EPS Awards. Uh, and this was like the precursor, so this is the EPS Awards, so the Engineering and Physical Sciences Awards for all the student societies. And we go and we do those, and it was a great night, and it was fun, I think you were there at the time. Martin, were you there? Yeah, this one's. And Ant gave me two of the best presents. Oh, I remember it as Ant giving me, so please, the memory of those. He gave me the first one, perhaps continuing, the Minion. And this was really, for those of you who have had a tour of the Makerspace, you might see lots of Minions. This was the first one. So I like to say that Ant actually started the trend off three years before we actually did anything. So that was the first 3D printed Minion. That was the first 3D printed UBI. I think we still got it. Uh, and doing those ones, tinkering, and do those. So I still have that in my office. And then one final one. I don't know if you remember this. Let me turn the lights up. 
I also haven't, oops, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I've just blinded everybody. There we go, let's turn it down. Yeah. They put auto lights in and do those. So yeah, that's something to moan about and do those. Uh, and going back to the final thing of you mentioning about the swimming pool floor tiles, which are now integrated in the teaching. And I used to enjoy talking to the students. I think you remember this, me having a, yeah, and Ant was one of those. And I actually have, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, talking, yeah, yeah, talking, yeah, going through. Yeah, well, it was quite yeah, fun times on a, on a morning. And I have one of the nicest presents that anybody's ever given me on Unexpected. Don't know if any of you remember this. Do any of you remember, remember this? This was one that Ant gave me. And he'd actually taken all my comments and all my feedback, and he put them on the bottom of wine for me. <laughs> so it comes back to the joker and done those. Um, this is one of my most treasured possessions in my office. Uh, do those. And, yeah. I remember him as hardworking, brilliant engineer, but also a really good friend, really good guy, and actually going the extra mile and doing these bits that actually may have gone, but his memory still remains with every single one of us. And I think it's quite fitting with the workshops and the refurbishments and those bits, the practical side of things. Yeah, he'd be in the makerspace working away. He'd be in the labs doing the welding, building the car, doing all those bits. So I think fantastic. And on that, I shall end and go and hide and yeah, and do those bits. And thank you. And um, we'll have a glass of wine at the end. Toes. I'm not going to embarrass you all. Yeah, yeah, but those. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'll take this off. Richard, um, just to finish off then, if I could invite uh, Paul, Penny, just to say a, a few words. Thanks every, everyone uh, for coming along tonight. I just wanted to say uh, a few thank yous. Um, but just before I do, what a wonderful collection of stories and anecdotes we've just had. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, we always find out something extra about him when we come to things like this and things we already knew. For example, I never knew his love of minions, to be quite honest, really. But I did know, and it was on the video, and didn't go anywhere without his blowtorch. He had to have it with him. <laughs> I mean, we, we used it for all sorts of things. Lighting the Christmas pudding was one, you know, I mean, yeah, barbecues, anything, candle, the blowtorch. So that was so, so, so ant. Um, it's very fitting that we had the memorial lecture here. Um, I don't know if everybody knows, but obviously I know Richard went here, um, graduated in a bit, but I also graduated as well from here and, and in fact our history uh, with Birmingham University goes back 40 years so um, because I graduated or started in 1979 and obviously and graduated in 19 so it's absolutely great that you know we could have this lecture here in Birmingham University in fact sitting here it did remind me of another ant story uh, which just shows his his sense of humor um, I took Ant for his interview, first interview when he, he come for the um, mechanical engineering degree. So, and, and we said, we'd do the accommodation tour. So we booked on the accommodation tour. So I was sitting next to Ant in the bus and we're driving along. And I said, in a moment, I'm going to go around the corner, Ant, and you're going to see my old hall of residence. So we go around the corner. What do we see? A pile of rubble with a digger on top of it because I've just knocked it down. So, and, and Ant, you know, he just couldn't stop chuckling about that all day and told everybody about the story that, you know, Dad's hall as residence has actually been knocked down, high hall, it, it, it used to be called. Um, anyway, back on track. So thank you, Matt. Uh, I, I don't know where you are. Up, back up the top. Thank you for organising this, thank you to the two Carls, you know, and Richard, Charlie, Martin, Dan, and Manuel for your stories. Um, it really does give us a wonderful insight into 
and as a student, as a friend and a colleague. And uh, <coughs> Penny and I, Richard Catt, Sophie, Henny, are all immensely proud of Ant's achievements that he's achieved in his 26 years. And I think you've, you've really expressed a lot of them tonight. And it's been fantastic for us to be here. I also want to thank uh, everybody for coming along tonight. Um, but I think, as Carl alluded to, many of you have run marathons, half marathons, or you competed in the Mercedes Karting Cup uh, to raise money for Ant's Memorial Fund. And I thought it was only right, although, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's probably <laughs> slightly depressing the tone, but it's only right I tell everybody, um, you know, how it's going and what we're doing and, and, and uh, etc. So, as some of you may know, or many of you may know, and was outwardly fit and healthy, as you've heard tonight, but he had an undiagnosed heart condition, which is what killed him. Um, so, we partnered with CRY, which is a charity called Cardiac Risk in the Young. And they specialize in sudden deaths. And they will tell you uh, that there's 12 of these sudden deaths for people between 14 and 34. And I look around here, that's, that's a lot of everybody here. 12 a week, basically, of people are passing away due to undiagnosed heart conditions. So CRY do various things. Obviously, one of the things that they do the research for uh, trying to find, you know, a, a, a cure for this. Secondly, they add support to uh, family members. And, and thirdly, they uh, run screening sessions for heart conditions. And they're funded by donations uh, to the charity. So that's really what we've used um, Ant's Memorial Fund for. And with your support and uh, I'm also president of the uh, Club of Wild Green, and with their support, uh, we've got a lot of money to fund six sessions. Uh, so we're, the first session is uh, July the 21st uh, of this year, and uh, Carl made reference to uh, the fact that, yes, Penny and I have been on ITV News. We've been on, in fact, just going back to the ITV News, one of the questions they asked us was, um, what did Ant do at Mercedes? So, and Ant never told us because it was always top secret. So he, he said he was Mr. Crankshaft, I think is what he said. But what I really wish I'd had this presentation before, because I could have said what Ant did was bottom end dynamics. I think that's an absolutely <laughs> classic term. <laughs> So, I think that would have been absolutely cracking. But anyway, I, unfortunately, unfortunately, I said he was Mr. Crankshaft. So, anyway, we've also, we've also uh, done a live interview on BBC West Midlands. So, we are putting a lot of publicity into uh, the, the screening event, which is July the 21st, and on the day, all the news people are coming on, the MP, Andrew Mitchell's coming, councillors are coming, Lord Lieutenant is coming, and we're going to really push the publicity to publicise CRY, publicise uh, Rotary, and obviously in Enhanced Legacy. Um, basically, over the next few years, uh, we hope to test 600 people, and CRY will tell you that one in 300 people tests with an abnormality. So all the money you've given to us, to his memorial fund, potentially is going to save a life. Well, it will save a life based on those statistics. So it's been absolutely fantastic, all everybody's support that they've given us. So um, I think we're over time. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the lab tour. So all I can say again is thank you ever so much to the speakers. Fantastic stories, real insight into Ant. Thank you to everybody for coming along tonight and thank you for supporting his memorial fund. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Paul. And that really draws to a close 
the formal part of the lectures, if you like, the, this evening. I think my reflection really is a, uh, a life that was tragically cut so short, but so very well lived, so fulfilling, I think, and I hope that you can take something away from that. So thank you for your, your wonderful words there, uh, Paul, as well. Thank you to the speakers this evening. Um, and particularly, I think I'd reiterate just again to, to thank Matt as well, because if it hadn't been for him constantly in my office saying, have you called Penny yet? Have you called Penny yet? Then this may not have happened uh, right now. It may have been much later on. So perhaps should we just give Matt one more applause as well? Well done, Matt. And we'll say goodbye now to our people online. I feel like I'm a presenter here. This is fantastic. But we'll say goodbye to the people online. And if I can invite you now, we'll have a walk around to the lab for the lab opening. <laughs>